And good Erev Shabbos to you, and I hope you're all well. Firstly, Mostovs this week, Mostov to Hannah and Tim Sonnenfield on the birth of their daughter, and to anyone else who's celebrating a birthday or anniversary in the coming week. We wish Rafur Shalem a full and speedy recovery to anybody's unwell. And we wish Arikha Yamim long life to Abe Alperstein on the sad loss of his wife Elise, and to anyone who's observing a yacht site in the coming week. Friends, earlier this week, we heard the sad news that Sir Captain Tom Moore had died at Bedford Hospital two days after being admitted with breathing problems. The Queen herself led tribute to the 100-year-old who'd raised £33 million for NHS charities. And she said, recognising the inspiration he provided for the whole nation and others across the world. You know, it's very rare for someone to be called a national treasure or national hero. But that's exactly what he became. In such a short time, he managed to capture the hearts of the nation, break two world records and have a royal male birthday postmark to his name. And what's remarkable is that just a year ago, no one even knew his name. Until he set out to walk around his garden a hundred times to raise a thousand pounds for charity and yet achieved his aim 30,000 times over, None of us had even heard of the World War II veterans. And it just shows us, as C.S. Lewis said, you're never too old to set another goal or to dream a new dream. And it's an important life lesson for us. And it's one that we can also learn from Moshe Rabbeinu's father-in-law, Yisro. You see, the Torah tells us that Yisro was Kohen Midian. He was the priest of Midian. And Michal to adds that there was no deity in the world that he hadn't worshipped. He tried them all. And the Gemara in Sota even says that he was called Putiel because he fattened calves for idolatry. And that leaves the Orachim to ask, why does the Torah tell us that Yisro was a priest of idolatry? It's hardly a merit to him. And he explains that the Torah wanted us to know Yisro's greatness that he converted to Judaism even though he occupied an exalted position in his country, and doing so was at the cost of his prominence and probably his wealth. As the Midrash tells us, even before Moshe Rabbeinu went to Midian, Yisro, having been the prince of idolatry, saw that there was nothing in it, and had his own thoughts of doing teshuva, giving up idolatry for good. And he said to the people of Midian, Up to now I have served you. But may Atza Zakin Ami, but now I'm old. Choose another prince for yourselves. I've left behind all my idols. And the people in turn excommunicated him. Now, if I, I don't know if Yusro was a hundred years old when he did this, but he was clearly an old man, as he said. And when he decided to turn his life around, and he is rewarded by having a sedra in the Torah named after him. And it just shows us that it's never too late. No matter how far we've gone down the wrong road, we can still turn around. The past is unalterable, but the future is the only thing that we can change. And if someone like Yisro, who was steeped in idolatry, was living a life that was completely antithetical to Torah, if he can, at such an advanced age, open his mind to truth and change, then we're certainly also capable of it. However old we are, it's still possible. Hope always remains. As the prophet Malachi puts it so beautifully, God says, Ki ani Hashem lo shanisi. I, God, have not changed. And you are still the children of Jacob. You have not ceased to be. God is telling us, however far we've strayed, however distance we might feel from Torah and mitzvahs, there's always a way back. And so let Yisro be an inspiration to us that we never know what we can accomplish until we try. And let Sir Captain Tom Moore be an inspiration to us that age is not a barrier to accomplishment. Have a good Shabbos.